Breaking news here in the CNN Situation Room. Congress has been notified that the U.S. will acknowledge definitively that chemical weapons have been used in Syria by the Syrian government. Let's head straight now to the White House, where our chief White House correspondent, Jessica Yellen, is standing by with the latest. Jess, what can you tell us? Hi, Brianna. Well, the White House has now officially acknowledged that they uh, found chemical weapons were used and that in a statement, this, quote, has changed the president's calculus on Syria. In an ongoing conference call, one of the president's senior national security officials said that the White House has made a determination that they will provide military assistance uh, to some forces inside Syria, but will not specify beyond that what the scale, the scope, or the nature of that military assistance is. And so that will be the next question we will be asking. Uh, and I'm sure your next guest will have plenty of questions of his own on that. But the headline is chemical weapons. And this crosses the president's red line. Now he's stepping into some form of military aid into Syria. Brianna. And still a lot of questions there. Jessica Yellen for us at the White House. And joining us now with more on this breaking news, Republican Senator John McCain. He is a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Uh, Senator McCain, thanks for being with us. You were, first off, let me ask you this. You were just on the Senate floor and you talked about how the uh, administration was going to be uh, arming the rebels. You sort of backpedaled on that. Uh, maybe you didn't want to get ahead of them there. I'm not sure if that's what it was. But now they've come out, we understand, and, and they've said that they will be giving military assistance to some forces. Um, not a lot of specifics here, and I know that this isn't going to be enough for you. Well, it can't be enough. Uh, the Russians are providing the most sophisticated equipment, missiles, airplanes, and we have uh, so far only seen light weapons come in, and in our case, uh, perhaps flak jackets and MMREs. Uh, but I had been told that, uh, as I mentioned on the floor, that it had been that military assistance, but they need a lot more than military assistance. We need to establish the no-fly zone. We need a safe zone within Syria. Every time that we have escalated a bit in our assistance, the Russians, Hezbollah, the Iranians are all in. And so uh, you've got to change the equation on the ground, and you can't do it with half measures. You cannot do it with just supplying weapons. It's too, Assad is uh, far too successful for that to be effective now. And I know that uh, you're certainly advocating in favor of a no-fly zone. Uh, we just heard from your Republican colleague, Senator Saxby Chambliss, who said he, he wouldn't want to go that far. Why do you think that's a good idea uh, and also, if you can speak to the fact that obviously a lot of Americans, and, and certainly this administration, it, is war-weary and, and is fearful of getting involved to such a degree uh, in, in another, I guess, war in, in this region. Well, first of all, the President of the United States needs to go and tell the American people why we are going to take action that I am advocating. Second of all, this is now a regional conflict. This isn't just a civil uh, a bunch of demonstrators being beaten up. Uh, this is a regional conflict. It spilled over into Jordan is destabilized. Lebanon is about to erupt into sectarian violence. The uh, jihadists are flowing in from all over uh, the Middle East. Uh, this is erupting into a regional conflict where the United States vital national security interests are at stake. If, Iran, if Bashar Assad goes, goes, it's the greatest blow to Iran in 25 years. If Bashar, they succeed in keeping him, that will be a great victory for the Iranians and everything that they represent. No, we don't want boots on the ground. And yes, we should be able to establish a no-fly zone relatively easily. If we can't, then we are wasting hundreds of billions of dollars of American taxpayers' money on national defense. There are certainly complications in arming the rebels in this case. We've seen that in the past uh, with other conflicts. Can you speak to that and perhaps some of what your concerns are and also, uh, in a way, how the U.S. can make sure uh, that arms don't fall into the wrong hands considering, uh, you know, all, all of the rebels aren't necessarily, I, I guess, the good guys. And you look at a conflict like this and it gets very complicated. It's not as clear as those are the good guys and those are the bad guys. Yeah, it was a lot less complicated a couple of years ago, and it was a lot less complicated a year ago, when every member of the national security team of the presence 
recommended giving arms to the rebels, and he turned that down. And now, every day that goes by, it's much more complicated. There are no good options. There's the chemical weapons caches, which have to be secured, which, uh, if they spread around, could have catastrophic uh, uh, consequences. But all of the options that I'm talking about, how difficult they are, I'm talking about establishing a safe zone, neutralizing uh, Bashar's air power, which is the decisive factor now in this conflict, as compared to doing nothing, look what the consequences of doing nothing are. They are catastrophic in a regional conflict. So I don't say it's easy. I don't say that there are any really good options. But I know what the worst option is, is what we've been doing for the last two years, which is nothing. Now, Senator McCain, um, can, can you give us a sense of how you found out that the U.S. would be arming the rebels? I had heard that from a reliable source that I'm sure would not like for me to give you his name, Brianna, and I'm sure you understand that. I certainly understand that. And but, the I know president, but the president, as you know, that what was just said, uh, I think corroborates that. Now the question is, is what kind of weapons? They have a nice, enough light weapons. They've got enough AK-47s. AK-47s don't do very well against tanks. They need anti-tank weapons and they need anti-air weapons. All right, Senator John McCain, thank you so much for joining us here in the Situation Room. We will continue to follow this breaking news. The U.S. government uh, now acknowledging that Syria has used chemical weapons on a small scale, but causing uh, between 100 to 150 deaths, we are told, by sources. This is that red line that President Obama outlined last summer, and it, it has now been crossed officially according to the Obama administration. This is breaking news. We'll continue to follow it right after the break.